I'm Dr. Rosemary Hekir, an optometrist, and I'll be talking to you today about glaucoma. Why did I choose this topic? Um, this is January, and this January is uh, Glaucoma Awareness Month. So let's start from what is glaucoma. What can we say is glaucoma? You know, you have been hearing of glaucoma, glaucoma, glaucoma. So let me just bring it to you. I say, in simple terms, glaucoma is more like a group of eye diseases that affects the eye optic nerve. What do we call this eye optic nerve? It's more like a bundle of fibers or nerves that send information to the brain. So if this nerve does not send information to your brain, you can see. The brain cannot tell you what you see. So imagine that this part of the eye getting damaged, so you won't be able to see. Why do we always talk about glaucoma? Glaucoma, we call it the scientific of sight because it's, it does not really show symptoms. People don't really experience the symptoms. It's just your doctors that see the signs that you're having glaucoma. And before you can even start experiencing symptoms, you already have this disease. You already have it and it's already stealing your sight before time. How does this glaucoma occur? It's mostly due to the increase of the intraocular pressure. This is what we call the intraocular pressure, is the pressure of the eye. Just like your body has pressure, like you hear the blood pressure and all, um, the eye has a pressure on its own called the intraocular pressure. This is from the aqueous humor in the eye. We have a fluid called aqueous humor that nourishes the eye, that helps nourish all the parts of the eye, mostly those in the anterior parts. So it is produced in the eye, it's produced in the eye and it goes out through a channel like a, what we call the trabecular meshwork. It's like a meshwork that allows this to flow out and flow into the eye. So when this liquid or when this fluid is not flowing well or is not being produced enough in the eye, it builds up pressure in the eye and that pressure talks on the eye, like even damages the optic nerve head. So that's almost of what glaucoma is about. So what are the risk factors to this glaucoma? What and what predisposes you to having glaucoma? There is age. Why is age a risk factor? It's just because your eye gets old as your body gets old. So your organs don't work as much as it was, it was before. Your eye does not exactly have enough strength as it has before when you were younger to be able to hold on to some of this pressure that can come once in a while in your eye. Mm. When you grow older too, there's something we call the lens inside the eye that helps transmit light into the eye. It gets hardened and all. And this change in shape of the lens can also make these angles to get narrower too. So when this angle and this meshwork is, is not removing enough fluid as it is as it's meant to be, it still brings off pressure in the eye. Then let's go to thin cornea. People that have corneas that are thinner than normal. The cornea is like a that transparent layer, is a, a transparent layer in front of your eyes. It covers more like the iris mostly. We people do not really see it, but it's more like the first surface you see where you see this black part of the eye. The cornea is there. When people have a thin cornea, they are likely to have thin sclera that is connected to the back of the eye. This is where the optic nerve head is. So it still tugs the eye and it makes it damage the optic nerve. African American region, the Hispanic region, you are still at the risk of developing glaucoma because its studies have shown that people from this part of the world normally have thin corneas. Then we have those that have the family history of glaucoma. 
people that have a family history like someone in your family got blind due to glaucoma before you should be coming for regular eye checkups to check has this come to you like is in your family is in the blood is in your gene so you have to be very cautious than people that do not have it at all we still have um different types of glaucoma we still have the open angle glaucoma this is when the angle is like too wide and the production of the liquid is is more like it's going out a little bit faster than it should then there is the angle closure glaucoma when this angle is too narrow to allow this fluid to pass through then we have the secondary glaucoma this is when glaucoma is developed through other eye diseases like diabetes cataracts diabetic retinopathy those type can lead to glaucoma too because some of them damage the optic nerve head then we have the pigmentary glaucoma that's when um pigments from the iris blocks this passage of flow we have always told you that glaucoma has no symptom unless you have started having glaucoma but angle closure glaucoma is more like the mostly some people describe it as the worst pain they ever have that's the only one that sort of comes with some symptoms and when it comes you have serious headache you see halos around lights that's like symptoms you see when you have angle closure glaucoma there is hazy vision there is eye pain and the problem with this angle closure glaucoma is if you have angle closure glaucoma and you're experiencing this pain you are meant to be rushed to the hospital because it's an emergency and we are meant to they are meant to carry out a, an emergency operation on you immediately because people with angle closure glaucoma can get blind in three hours that's how bad it is because if you even stop experiencing that pain like you have actually lost the eye i say mostly glaucoma there are three things that mostly characterize glaucoma you see increase in eye pressure there is enlargement of the optic nerve head and there is loss of visual field people that have glaucoma mostly can see far well you would think you're seeing very well they are seeing well but their peripheral vision has stayed blocking it's more like it steals, it steals your sight silently without you knowing it comes to close it to darkness so that's why we always make people aware of glaucoma because you cannot detect glaucoma if you don't come for eye checkup it's very hard to detect glaucoma on your own if you start seeing any symptoms you already have glaucoma if you start seeing any symptoms of glaucoma mostly what people normally notice is when they start losing their peripheral visual field you already have glaucoma the other ones are signs that is only when your doctor looks in that they will say oh there's something wrong with this okay let's go to the treatments for glaucoma you know glaucoma does not have cure glaucoma does not have any cure so what we normally do is to manage the remaining vision you have left for you so that it does not get lost types of treatments you can have there are drugs pressure drops that help you reduce the pressure of your eye the intraocular pressure there are surgeries that you can conduct there is trabeculectopathy eridoctomy that will help you so let's get to the tips for how to help people living with glaucoma you can do regular exercise to increase your blood flow eat healthy vegetables fish you can take your medications do not smoke you're not meant to smoke because this smoking can increase your bp and it can help it can lead to inflammation which are all risk factors to glaucoma so it can predispose you more and get you into harm's way for glaucoma too mostly when you are sleeping it will be better if you elevate your head normally while sleeping 
you drink enough fluids but don't drink it too fast don't drink too fast um watch how you take your caffeine because caffeine can lead to increase of blood pressure eye pressure protect your eyes with your protective eyewears because when people have glaucoma they normally have all these halos around lights and all protect your eyes and be careful with some of the exercises you do some of your yoga exercises those ones that normally keep your hats above your eyes and all do not try putting any type of pressure on your eyes the best way to cure glaucoma is to take care of your eye pressure that's all thank you